Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Priscilla, working with my Math 1324 class. Today we're starting Gauss Jordan Elimination. This is our first time that we've actually worked with any matrices. And uh, we start off with something we sort of hint at in college algebra. Those of you that had me for college algebra, this was one of the pretty, some of the easy stuff, writing augmented matrices. And with the augmented matrix, you have a system of equations. A system of equations is just a group of equations. And we have three variables and three equations. The variables are x, y, and z. And when you write the augmented matrix, I like to label the columns. You're going to have the x coefficients in this first column, then the y coefficients, the z. That vertical line acts like an equal sign. And the constant goes on the right. So instead of trying to write real small and fill in this box, well, maybe I can do that. The first, when we talk about matrices, we talk about rows and columns. Rows are horizontal and columns are vertical. In college algebra we say, okay, the size of a matrix is the number of rows by number of columns. That X is read as by. number of rows by, number of columns. And so like this matrix here, this augmented matrix is what it's called, has three rows, four columns. So this is a three by four matrix. And college algebra, those of you that had me, we had some problems where, okay, here's the augmented matrix. No, here's the system of equations. Write the augmented matrix and state the size. I'm writing the x coefficients in the x column, then the y coefficients, negative 8, negative 6, 3, and the z coefficients, 6, 5, negative 5. And what am I going to have on the right? Um, Negative 5, 1, and 9. So let's see. Negative 5, 1, oh, negative 9. So it's called an augmented matrix. Probably insulting your intelligence. Uh, well, maybe the terminology is new to you. On uh, number two, we're given the augmented matrix, and it says, okay, write the equations. Well, looking at what they've written here, oh, hmm, looking at what they've written, let's see if I can, I don't want it to be, too dark, or too bright, or too dark. Are y'all caught up with me? The variables here, well, let's say x, y, and z, theoretically they could be p, q, and r, but, uh, or any three letters, but you can tell by the answers down here that it's going to be uh, x, y, and z. So what would go in this first blank here? Uh, is it going to be a 2? What about this blank right here? What would I put there? Is it three? See, three, three, four, three x plus three y plus four z equals negative three. And what about that last, the third equation would be five x plus three y plus three z equals three, okay. Now, Before we do problem number three, let's go ahead and do number four. Let's 
This one here follows number two really well. Looking at number four, it says, okay, this matrix is in what's called reduced row echelon form. That means that there's ones down the diagonals and zeros everywhere else. You'll notice there's not a vertical line written right here. And sometimes, maybe just how it's programmed, it isn't. Sometimes it won't show there or it's not being written there. So if you feel the need to have the vertical line drawn, okay. But if how many variables are we going to have here? Could y'all figure that out? Let's start with x. We'd have an x, y, a z column. There's another letter, so maybe use a w or something. But if you wrote these out as equations, the way we were on number two, what would this first equation be? One equals two yeah, 1x equals 2 fifths. What about the second equation? What would it be? One y, y equals 5, or just y equals 5. And the third equation? Z equals negative 5. And I guess the letter I chose for that fourth column, W, is what? Uh, negative 3. If you have it written in this reduced row echelon form, then the solution is staring you in the face. X is two-fifths. <coughs> Notice, they don't specify variables. They're just going to list them out. You list it out. Two-fifths, comma. Here you'd write a five. Then a negative five. And a negative three. So if we could take a matrix and rewrite it so that we have... Uh, ones down the diagonal, zeros everywhere else, then that's going to be really, really good. Because then we have the solutions. And that's the key behind this Gauss-Jordan elimination. We're going to be solving systems of equations, like number one. We're going to solve it by taking this matrix and rewriting it so we have ones down that diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Once you have it written in this form, ones down the diagonals, zeros everywhere else, then the numbers over here are the solutions. Okay. So this ones down the diagonals, zeros everywhere else is called reduced row echelon form. If you look under document sharing, uh, let me see, I'm not sure. Let me, uh, let me look and see. Uh, I'll pull up a document that is uh, that formally defines reduced echelon form. We'll look at that for a moment and then we'll move on.